Welcome to Deschutes Public Library's online programming. My name is Liz Goodrich. I'm a member of the Community Relations team. And today we are going to explore Genealogy 101 and the resources that you can access through the library to help you discover your own family tree. Um, today's presenter is Jenny Peterson. She has worked for Deschutes Public Library in a variety of roles since 2008. She is currently a community librarian with a focus on adult services at Downtown Bend Library. Prior to working in libraries, she worked at, a news, at newspapers and television news stations in Canada, England, and the United States. She can't believe she waited so long to make the transition to, to, from newsrooms to libraries, where she's been able to help people one-on-one -on -one with their information needs and challenges as well as talk endlessly about books. Um, please welcome Jenny Peterson. Thanks, Liz, and hello and welcome everybody. Uh, welcome to Genealogy 101. This session is intended for beginners, so if this is your first foray into genealogy, you are in the right place. So what exactly is genealogy? It's the research of your own personal history. You're essentially building a pedigree for yourself through your family tree. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Genealogical research is one of the hardest types of research you will do, but it's also all about you, so it is never boring. In this presentation, I'm going to give you an overview of the process of genealogy. I'm going to talk about how to set yourself up for success, the resources you're going to use in your research, and how Deschutes Public Library can help you access those resources. I'm then going to discuss some other local genealogical organizations that you'll want to connect with. There is a lot of overlap between these topics, so I will be referring back and forth. Your genealogical research is going to generate a lot of materials. So the very first thing you want to do is set up an organizational system for yourself. You're going to need a way to file and organize all the documents you come across. People use binders, tabs, filing cabinets. There are a lot of ways to do this. You just need to find what works for you and it will likely evolve as you get further into your research. You also want to set up a chart like this one on the screen, this is a free downloadable family tree from Genealogy Bank to record all of your findings. Now there are many of these charts available both to print out and in online formats. Again, just find what works best for you. This chart highlights two important tenets of genealogical research. Number one, you always want to start with yourself and move backwards through time. Many families have stories of famous ancestors, but don't try to start from the famous name and work forward to yourself. There are way too many threads to follow and you will get all tangled up. Number two, most genealogists require at least two pieces of corroborating evidence before they'll enter information onto their chart. And that's what we're gonna talk about next, where we find those pieces of evidence. more information is being digitized and is available online, we often jump on our computers to start our research. But there is an analog step you want to take first. The first resource for your genealogical research is your family. Gather up any photo albums and scrapbooks you can find. This is fodder you will not find anywhere else. Another important step is to interview any living relatives you can. Again, you'll find information and clues for your searching that you will not find online. After family, the most valuable resource genealogists have in researching their American ancestors is the census. The census is mandated by the Constitution and it's taken every 10 years. It's regular and the data collected is uniform across the country. Questions asked do vary from year to year, and you can find a considerable amount of useful information from birthplace of parents to occupation. Since the census records families together, it can also be used to connect generations. It's easy to search, it's easy to access, and we're going to talk about how to do that shortly. You can search the census through the 1940 rolls. 
More recent years have not yet been released to the public in order to protect privacy of people who are likely still alive. Next is vital records. Vital records are the birth, marriage, and death records kept by the government. These records are valuable for genealogy researchers for the same reasons as census records, inclusivity and richness. They are inclusive in the sense that most Americans are recorded on some kind of vital record. And they're rich because they often tell quite a bit more about the people. They can also link generations like the census does. However, they differ from the census in accessibility since they're created and held by local governments and there is no standardization across the country. So whereas one state may have digitized their vital records and put them online, another may still require you to mail county offices or even visit in person. Of the vital records, death records are the most accessible because governments were generally diligent and consistent in recording deaths and they are also more liberal in giving these records out since privacy is no longer an issue. Newspapers can be very useful to genealogy researchers, especially obituaries. And with digitization projects, they're becoming easier to access, but there still is a lot of digging around to do. Researchers often expect to find longer, more descriptive obituaries, but brief death notices are more common especially up until the 1950s. Nevertheless, the information provided in these short notices is also very helpful. Just remember that newspapers don't automatically print either obits nor death notices, and they often do cost money. So one might not exist for your ancestor. Many of the resources you'll be using for your genealogy research won't be found in Ben. It could be records held at government offices across the country or on microfilms at other libraries. They could also be books held elsewhere. What we do have are indexes and finding guides. Like an index in a book, these indexes point to the existence of a record and tells you where it lives. You can then contact the agency that holds that record to access a copy. One of the more interesting Types of indexes you'll use in your genealogy research are cemetery indexes. These list where a person's grave is located in a graveyard. And you can get a lot of information off a headstone if you visit. You'll also use directories, such as phone books, reverse directories, and city directories. City directories are the predecessors to phone books, mostly published from 1860 to 1930. They listed city residents and city institutions. These are great tools for genealogists since they track individuals in the years between the censuses and record information such as address and employer. They also provide an, an annual snapshot of a city, its churches, schools, street addresses, and other basic information that researchers find useful. Town and family histories. Novice genealogists often overlook these local histories because they assume that their ancestors wouldn't merit mention in a book. This is a misconception though, as local histories often describe the lives of many different local residents, especially if it's a smaller area. And even if your ancestor isn't named, you'll get a sense of what life was like for them. More rare are family histories but it's worth looking to see if someone somewhere in your family tree has already written one. That is by no means an exhaustive list of all the resources you're going to use in your genealogical research, but it does cover the main ones you'll use as you're starting out. Now I'm gonna show you how Deschutes Public Library is going to help you conduct this research. First of all, we have many guides and how to's for doing genealogy that are much more in depth than this presentation. They're going to talk about those organizational systems, interviewing techniques and more tips for researching. You can search our catalog for print books. We also have digital books and digital audio books available through Overdrive and Hoopla. 
And you can even take genealogy lessons through our Gale Courses resource, which offers six week teacher moderated courses, or access the great course, Discovering Your Roots through Canopy. The Shoots Public Library has also put together a history and genealogy portal page or research guide on our website. Simply go to www.deschutzlibrary.org, click on Research and Learning, then click on History and Genealogy. Consider this your one-stop shop where you'll find access to all of our databases, as well as links to other useful online resources and websites. You will also find links to those courses that I just mentioned. DPL subscribes to three genealogy databases. These are databases that we pay for and you access for free with your library card from anywhere you have internet access. The most recognizable is Ancestry.com. We have a library subscription, which is a more limited subscription than a regular uh, individual subscription, in that it isn't able to personalize the experience for you. For instance, you aren't able to create a digital family tree using our subscription, since multiple people are using that same subscription. Normally, our Ancestry subscription is only available from inside one of our library buildings, either on one of our public computers or your device connected to our Wi-Fi. But during the COVID-19 building closures, we are able to offer access outside of our building. So right now you can access it through the internet. Similar to Ancestry, but less well known is MyHeritage. MyHeritage is always available both inside and outside of our library buildings. Both of these databases allow you to search census rolls, vital records, indexes, directories, histories, and more. They do have access to some different information, so it's worth searching both of them. Heritage Quest is owned by the same company as Ancestry and offers a few specialized collections such as the Revolutionary War records, Freedman Bank records, and many more digitized local histories. When you're searching these databases, be tenacious and try your search many different ways using different combinations of search fields. Don't just do one search, find nothing and give up. Remember that there are several layers of mistakes potentially baked into these records. For example, census takers often misspelled names. And then when items were digitized into these databases, uh, more mistakes might have been recorded. This is where the research, the research gets hard and you really need to put on your detective hat. In your research, you are going to find references to articles, obituaries, and histories that have not been digitized and that are not held locally. You can use a service Deschutes Public Library offers called Interlibrary Loan to request the items that are held at another library in the United States. We might not always be able to get an item from another library, but we can always ask. You can also use the website WorldCat, which is short for World Catalog, to search for newspapers and local histories that might be held at other libraries. If you find a record that is held at a US library, you can request it through our interlibrary loan page. Just one note, during the COVID-19 closures, this service is not available. Check our website to see when it starts up again. While Deschutes Public Library has a lot of resources for genealogists, we are not genealogical experts. Luckily, there are a few local organizations that are, and they offer even more training and resources for the public. Ben Genealogical Society is located in Williams Hall behind Jake's Diner off Highway 20 on the east side of town. It has its own library and offers monthly trainings and lectures of specific research topics. Genealogical research is a central tenet of the Mormon religion. And as such, the Church of Latter-day Saints runs the largest 
genealogy center in the world in Salt Lake City, the Family History Library. Many local LDS churches offer small family history libraries on site and offer resources and trainings to the public. Be sure to check with those organizations directly about any closures or changes in service due to COVID-19. I want to thank you for joining me in this quick crash course in genealogy. I hope it was useful. And if you have further questions about using any of the library's resources, feel free to call or email us. And if you'd like more in-depth training on using any of our genealogy databases, uh, you can use our Book of Librarian service for that. Thanks and happy researching. Thank you, Jenny, um, and good luck to all you genealogical researchers out there. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>